Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today we're going to be going over adding a double jump with animations. So in the past I did a video on doing a double jump, uh, but in this one we'll just be going over it again, but this time, you know, adding kind of a, a, a second jump animation. So um, with that, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is go into our third person blueprint here, and um, it's going to glitch out on me, so give me a second. Okay, so you'll go into your third person blueprint. Okay, find your jumping behavior, right? And I'm just going to delete the comment there, and I'll really quick go over how to add the double jump again. Um, so what you'll want to do is add two variables. Um, the first one we'll call jump counter. Um, make sure you spell that the way you want to spell it. And then we'll add another one called max jumps, and make sure that both of those are integers. All right, so compile and save really quick. We'll take max jumps and set it to a value of two for now. Um, so we'll be able to jump a maximum amount of two times. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll get our jump counter and we wanna check if it is less than um, our max jumps. So we'll get our max jumps, um, plug that in. Okay, and now we have a Boolean. So we'll do a branch off of that. And basically, if our jump counter is less than our max jumps, we want to increase our max jumps by one, so we'll say integer plus integer, and we'll add one. Okay, then we'll use that to set our jump counter. Okay, and then finally plug that into jump, and that's really all you need to do for a um, a you know double jump. Uh, I guess the last thing is on event on landed. You want to make sure that you set the jump counter back to zero. Otherwise, you won't be able to jump anymore. All right, and then the last thing, you'll go to your third person character here and you wanna go find this uh, jump max hold time value. So you can find that by saying max, you know, hold time. Okay, and you'll set that to just like a value of maybe 0.1, that'd probably be all right. Um, just something that's not zero, um, because then you'll be, uh, because if it's zero, then you won't be able to jump more than once. So if we try this out really quick, I can hit space and I jump twice. All right, so, so that's all fine and great. Um, but you know it'd be cooler if we had an animation so let's go ahead and do that um, so what we're gonna do first actually is we're gonna go to Adobe Mixamo and we're gonna use that for our animation so I'm gonna go to Mixamo um, and I have some tutorials on how to get a character um, you know uploaded and kind of use the characters from Mixamo to retarget animations so that's kinda what we're gonna do here um, so I'll go to my assets and I've got this test model here okay and once you've selected a character, you can hit Find Animations. Okay, and the animation we're going to search for, um, we'll type Flip. And we're going to go use this Running Forward Flip. Okay. So when you click on it, um, it's going to load up. And once it's loaded, it should look something like this right now. So he's running and doing his little flip. Um, and go ahead and just hit In Place. So that'll just do it in place, and that's kind of what we want here. All right, so once we've done that, just hit Add to Pack. Um, you can rename it if you want. I'm going to call this just double jump so it's easier for me to find when I download it. And then we'll say add to my assets and then hit view slash download. Okay, so then just double check, make sure it's in place once more because um, sometimes it gets reset. Then you can hit Q download and then for the format, we're going to choose FBX for Unreal Engine 4. Um, if you don't have this option, then choose the FBX um, and then just follow the you know kind of related tutorial on how to do that. Um, but there we go, we'll choose that, hit Q download, and now we'll wait for that to process. Once it's processed, we will download it and wait for that. And now it should be ready, so we can extract it. And I'm just going to extract it to itself, a folder called, you know, double jump. All right. So we've done that. Now let's go ahead and go back to Unreal really quick. Okay. And um, in here, we're going to want to create a folder really quick that we'll call just Mixamo. We'll open this up, and this folder is going to be purely for, um, you know, importing assets that you want to use for retargeting. Um, so we'll say import. We're going to go to our downloads. We're going to find that double jump, and the first thing we want to import is not the animation, but the model itself. So we'll say open, um, and we don't need any materials or textures on it because we're only using it for animations. So we'll say import. Okay, and it's going to complain, but just ignore it doesn't actually matter. Okay, hit save all really quick and now we can import the animation. So we'll take our running forward flip, import it, and for the skeleton to, to select, choose the test model. 
So we'll import that. Hit save really quick again. Um, now we should have the animation in, which is great. Okay, next what we need to do is set up the kind of retargeting poses so that we can actually retarget the animations onto the UE4 skeleton. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll open up the test model first. Okay, um, we'll go to our skeleton here and we're gonna say show advanced. And I'm gonna right click and um, set all these to um, skeleton for right now. We'll change the root here to animation, the pelvis to animation scaled. Um, and you might not actually have to do this per se. Um, and then, yeah, we'll set all the IKs here to animations. Uh, but anyways, as I was saying, you might not actually have to do this since we're not um, retargeting anything onto this skeleton. Uh, but I like to do it just in case I ever need to. So we'll go to Retarget Manager next, and if you don't have that open, you can just click this little button and it'll open it. We'll choose a new rig, say Select Humanoid Rig. And then for each of the nodes here, we want to set the corresponding bone on our skeleton. So for root, we'll say root. Pelvis, we'll say pelvis. Now the spines here are good. Um, it's just these uppercase ones that need to be redone. So we'll go and choose the upper arm left here. Hand left will be lowercase hand left. Upper arm right will be upper arm right. Hand right will be hand right. Thigh left will be thigh left. Foot left will be foot left. You know, thigh right, thigh right, <laughs> foot right, foot right. I think you guys get it. Um, so then you can hit show advanced and just double check make sure these are all filled in uh, which it looks like they are which is great Okay, um, So that's all set up. We can just save that now and actually close it uh, But next we'll go ahead and go to our mannequin folder here go to character mesh and mannequin and open this guy up And we'll want to go to our skeleton again um, And go to the skeleton tree hit show advanced options and the only one we're going to change here is the pelvis Which will change to animation scaled so we'll save that, and then we can open up the retarget manager once more, um, and we will take the rig here, select a humanoid rig, and then again change the bones once more. All right. Um, you guys can fast forward a little bit if you want, but I'll just I'll just do it because I'm doing it. Oh, I looks like I messed up. Don't mess up. <laughs> Make sure you do things carefully, otherwise your uh, bones won't retarget well and the animation will be all messed up. So just make sure you're going slower than I am because <laughs> you don't want mistakes. So anyways there's that. You know the advanced ones are good. Um, so we can hit save but now the last thing we want to do is set up his retarget pose so that it looks more like um, this pose. So right now he's in an A pose but we want him to be more of a T pose. So what we'll do is um, for our mannequin uh, first thing let's go to show and we're going to say bone all hierarchy so that we can just kind of see the bones more easily and next we'll hit view pose down here so that we can kind of see what his retarget pose is um, and we'll go ahead and select the arms um, take the upper arm and I'm going to change the um, rotation uh, value or grid snapping to point or to five degrees and we'll move this up to about uh, maybe 50 okay I'll take the lower arm move it down to about 10 might be alright take the hand move it up 10 we'll do the same on the other side really quick 50 um, lower arm down to 10 hand up to 10 okay next let's just go set it you know more straight okay I'll take the upper arm here move it this way a little bit by 5 move the lower arm back uh, 30 and then the hand if I can grab it the hand will move about 10 I think yeah 10 okay and then just do the same on the other side take the upper arm move it 5 move the lower arm back 30 and then move the hand 10 okay so once you've done that hit save pose and that'll be good All right so next thing you're going to want to do is um, now that you have you know all your retargeting set up you can go into your Mixamo fold folder take the animation right click on it say retarget anim assets duplicate anim assets and retarget and then select the skeleton to retarget to so we'll go ahead and you know we'll just choose this one I'm gonna leave it in the game content folder you can change it if you want so we'll retarget well, let's open it up and we see that everything's working fine so that's great, right? That's what we want. 
So I'll just save everything really quick. So next what we'll do is we'll go back to our third person blueprint here. And this is you know now where we need to start changing some things up. So what we'll do is we'll add a variable really quick here called um, double jump. Okay, and we want to change that to a boolean. All right. And so from here, we're going to move our jump way out, and let's move the event landed down here. Um, but basically, what we want to do is we want to check if our current jump counter is you know equal to like the second jump. All right, or greater than or equal to it. Okay, so if you have any other, you know, subsequent jumps, um, you'll just continue to do that same double jump animation. Um, but you know, you could also change it up based on the same kind of um, technique we're going to use here. So um, enough talk. Let's go ahead and take this, and we're going to say, is it greater than or equal to some number? Okay, and that number is going to be. Um, we're going to choose two because that'll be our second jump. Okay. And then um, we want to do a branch from there and hook this up. And basically, um, if this is false, right? If it's only our basically our first jump, um, then we'll just do a regular jump. But if it's true, then we're gonna want to jump again. But instead of only jumping, we want to set the uh, double jump uh, variable here to true. Then we're gonna do just a little delay, okay? of 0.2 seconds that's fine and then we're gonna set double jump again back to false okay and so this this variable we're gonna use it in our animation blueprint so that we can you know kinda drive that that flipping animation so last thing here in the blueprint is on event on landed we just wanna make sure that we for sure set double jump to false okay so that's everything in the um, blueprint here so next what we'll do is we'll go out to the content browser, let's go to the mannequin, animations, and the anim blueprint. Okay, and we can close this first one, and we'll go to the anim graph, open this up, and basically this is where we're going to add that kind of double jump state. Alright, so first thing, actually let's go to the event graph, okay, and at the end here, let's right click, type try get pawn owner. Okay, from here we want to cast to our third person character or whatever your character is. Okay, and now that we've cast to him, we can access that double jump value. So we'll say get double jump. Okay, then we'll right click and we want to promote this to a variable that we can use inside of the animation blueprint. So I'm going to call it double jump again, but I'm just going to add a question mark at the end. Okay, so we'll hook that up and that's all we need to do for that. So next we'll go back to the anim, anim, uh, the anim graph, excuse me. And we're going to take that animation that we just added, this run forward flip. We're going to drag it out, drop it, and I'm going to rename it to um, double jump. Okay. So we've done that. Next, we need to add kind of the transition states that will allow you to enter the double jump. Okay. So for for right here, uh, or sorry, for off the jump start, we'll drag out and hook it up and open this. And we'll just take the double jump and drag it and drop it right on the transition. That's all you need to do for that transition. We'll go back. Next, we'll add a um, transition from the jump loop back to the double jump. Open that up. It's going to be the same thing here. Do the double jump. Okay, we'll go back one last time. And now we just need to have a state that goes from the double jump back to our jump loop. Okay, because if you recall, the jump loop kind of looks like this. So that'll be nice, you know, to have him kind of go back to that idle flip uh, or after he's done with the flip. Okay, so we'll go from the double jump, drag out and connect it to the jump loop. Then we'll open up that transition state. Okay, and this time what we want to do is right click and say time remaining. We'll do a time remaining ratio of the previous animation. Okay, and we'll say if this is less than or equal to about 0.2, okay, um, then we'll do an and boolean. And we want to make sure that also our double jump value here is false. So we'll get it and we'll say not, which will be if it's not true. Okay. And then that'll be our state for that. So we can compile and save now. And we can try this out. So I'm going to play in a new window. Okay. Now if we hit play or you know our space bar, right, we jump once normal. But if we hit it twice, 
we do our little animation and then we go back to that kind of idle um, looping state. Now the reason that we added this little part um, here from the jump start to the double jump is because if someone presses spacebar really fast um, it would skip the animation otherwise. So um, that's why that's there. So you know we can press space really fast twice and it'll do its thing. Okay. Now the animation is a little jerky so let's go fix it up a little bit or at least I can show you some things you can do to fix it up. Um, we'll go to the animation really quick, open it. Um, and we can scrub to about maybe here um, kind of where his arms are raised um, because in the jump loop animation his arms are kind of up so it'll be an o it'll be a good transition from there so we'll you know we'll right click at that point and say remove from frame 0 to 15 okay save that now if we try that out it might be a little nicer yeah there we go see it looks like it kind of just flips into the you know the movement a little better you can see there he goes right so there you have it. There's how to, you know, at, do a double jump with an animation. And one thing I wanted to point out is that there have been some changes from 4.12 to 4.13. So just to show those really quick, um, I'm now in 4.13, and it's the exact same thing. Um, but now if I go into the third-person character blueprint, um, you'll see that instead of a max jumps variable, I'm now using this variable called jump max count. And I haven't added it myself. It's actually now built into the character blueprint. Um, so if you click on self, you can go down and find um, under character jump max count. Uh, so this is the value that you need to set for however many jumps you want. Um, because otherwise, um, any variable that you, like if you try to make a variable, you know, try to make one called max jumps, for example, and then use that, okay? Um, this, this jump max count is going to override it no matter what. So um, you won't be able to... Uh, do your jumps that way. So, but other than that, right, it's literally you're just taking that the max jumps and replacing it with the jump max count. And you do that by get jump max count. Not that. <laughs> I think you get the idea. But anyways, it's literally the same exact thing. Okay, going through. Same thing in the animation blueprint, just that little change. So, Anyways, um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you liked the video, like and subscribe, um, and I will see you in the next one.